Hey, what's up, beautiful people? My name is Apostle Bennett. I pastor an amazing church here in the beautiful city of Dallas, Fort Worth, also in the state of Texas. And I am honored to be with you this morning to share in this amazing opportunity of worship. Uh, for everything that's happening right now, we need a word. And for us, every single year, I'm very intentional as it pertains to how we approach the year. And I usually take a moment to prophetically decree that word in our church in the region that we're in. And I don't believe that it's by happenstance nor mistake that you are here this morning. I truly believe that there is a word from God specifically for you. Everything about the pandemic has just changed for you. So you might want to buckle up right now because your life is getting ready to be changed by the power of the word of God. So before we go into the service that's already in action, I'm going to ask you all to do me a favor. Listen, I know you just met me and I just met you, but it's cool. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to do me a favor and invite as many people as you possibly can. I'm telling you, invite your friends, your neighbors, even your haters, your bays, boyfriends, exes, girlfriends, whatever that status is with you. I want you to invite them to this experience because you never know. Someone's life can be transformed by you leveraging, leveraging your influence this morning. So can you help me out by doing that like right now? Go ahead, just hit the button that says comment, like, and share, and then leverage that influence that you have because everything that's going on right now with the struggles we have right now, even on 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue, we're in the middle of a pandemic, we're dealing with chaos, we're dealing with social injustice, we're dealing with race, all kind of issues, people need encouragement. And I believe your like and your share is going to be the thing that lifts someone's spirit starting this weekend. So do me a favor, do just that. And I've got some few things that I want to talk with you about, but I'll talk to you about that at the end of our time together today. So let's prepare ourselves as we're going into a word that's already in progress, because guess what? This will be the year where everything, and I mean everything, excluding nothing, will let's be stable. We're going to be in Proverbs chapter 14, brand new teaching series we're in, and I'll talk about that here in just a few moments, but I want to get to the word today. So please open your Bibles. We're probably going to spend quite a bit of time in the book of Proverbs this month. Um, this, this is going to be your year of practicality. Okay, I can't get an amen today. Some of y'all are spiritual, but you're no earthly good. Your life is chaotic. Your relationships are chaotic. Your finances are chaotic. Y'all ain't going to talk back to me. You're, you're, you're very spiritual. If I give you the mic, you can pray. I mean, pray through, but, but your signature carries no weight. Shanda Bakuria Messiah. But God is going to allow this to be the month. We're going to talk about some practical things in your life because you're getting ready to mature in your relationship with God and you're not going to have to depend on miracles. Come on, talk to me. You're not going to have to depend on miracles. Miracles were really designed for unbelievers. Every time God releases a miracle, God is just using you to, to witness to somebody else, but God never intended for the believer to be stuck on miracles. Okay, it's quiet in this church. I was this morning, uh, feel I was this morning getting dressed and thinking about today's assignment, thinking about the objectives of the year. And I'm gonna do a message, I think at the end of this month, entitled, How Do We Do It? How do we do it? How do we pull it off? What exactly? My wife received a call from someone on last evening about that exact question. How do we do it? How do I work a job and run a business? How do I be a wife, work a job and run a business? How can I get a witness today? How, how do I leverage my influence? How can I leverage my gifting? How can I leverage what God has placed in me, praise God, to not only 
change other people's lives, but how can it benefit my life as well? And so we're going to talk about that a little bit. But let's go to Proverbs chapter 14, verse number 12. Proverbs 14 and 12. By now you should be there if you're watching on the screens. It's right there for you in the lower thirds or at the bottom of the screen. And if you find these words, before every man there lies a wide and pleasant road that seems right, but... It ends in death. Let me read it for those who are listening to me right now, because I don't think you caught the weight of what I just said. Before every man, somebody shout before every man. There lies a wide and pleasant road that seems right, but ends in death. Anytime you see but in a sentence, it means that it cancels the prior statement and the second statement or the preceding statement becomes active. So in other words, everything you thought was right ends in death. And so this morning, if you would allow me the time to be practical, I want to talk about the road to stability. The road to stability. Everybody shout the road to stability. On any successful journey, there are going to be bumps in the road, the little twists and turns along the way. But if we are to reach the destination uh, that brings about consistent stability, we need to be reminded that there will be opportunities to detour along the way. Let me say that again. If we are to reach the destination that brings about consistent stability, we must be reminded that there will be opportunities uh, of detours along the way. And some of you all didn't catch it, but some of you are stuck in a detour even right now. Right, right. Truth is, in life, we're given different routes different routes, different routes that are supposed to get us to a location that at first glance, at first glance, it appears desirable until you realize that the route you chose is filled with chaos and confusion. If you've been following us during this time of consecration, you know by now and understand that it is our prophetic decree and it is our public declaration that this will be the year of stability. Somebody shout, I will be stable. Come on, come on. You're going to have to prophesy to yourself this morning. I know everything is, is crazy around you, but somebody shout, I will be stable. Come on, just put that in the chat if you believe that. This will be my year of stability. Come on, somebody shout the year of stability. Come on, come on, come on. I can't hear you even in the cyber sanctuary. Let us hear you calling out right now. Somebody shout, this is my year of stability. Now, please understand, it is my conviction, it's my contention that there are four areas of your life uh, that God has dubbed stable this year. The first area of your life that I am believing that will be stable, number one, is your spiritual walk with God. It is your spiritual walk with God. In the past, you've been all over the place spiritually. You, you at this church today, another church next week. Y'all ain't going to talk back to me. You're inconsistent with your disciplines. But it's my belief that this is the year where God is going to cause you to be stable spiritually. Somebody shout, I'm ready to be spiritually stable. Come on, you're going to know how to get a prayer through, praise God. You're going to know the word for yourself. You're not going to need a prophet or a bishop to encourage you but you're going to take on the persona of David who said David encouraged himself and the reason he was able to do that was because he was a man who was spiritually stable your your life may be crazy but your spiritual walk will be stable somebody shout spiritual stability the second area of your life that I am believing that will be stable this year it is your emotional state. Some of y'all are on a spiritual high, but you crazy. 
Y'all ain't going to talk back to me. Uh, uh, we can't hold a conversation with you unless it's about John 3.16 or 2 Timothy 2.15 or 2 Corinthians chapter 3 uh, that says if any man's in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away. Your spiritual walk is intact, but your emotions are all over the place. You're one way today, another way. Y'all ain't going to talk back to me. In other words, we're going to deal with your schizophrenic. Y'all ain't going to talk back to me. It's Issues in your life. You need to be spiritually sound and emotionally stable. Second area God's going to deal with is your emotional stability. Somebody shout, I want to be stable emotionally. You need to know that God gave you your emotions, but the enemy has hijacked your emotions for his benefit, which is why you're one way today and 10 seconds later, you're somebody else. Uh, glory to God. The second area of your life that I am believing that will be stable, those of you who are watching, is God is going to stabilize your relationships he's going to stabilize you relationally somebody shout i want my relationships to be stable come on say it again i want my relationships to be stable that means your peer-to-peer -peer relationships. I tell you all the time that God is concerned about how we handle relationships. You got a whole book in the Bible that is designed to deal with peer-to-peer -peer relationships. The book of Psalms helps us understand how to get right with God. The book of Proverbs helps us understand how to get along with each other. God is concerned about our relational stability. The st Fourth area that I believe that is going to be stable for you, and if I got a few people in the room or those who are listening to this message right now, but I got a sneaky suspicion that God is also stabilizing you financially. Oh, come on, talk to me, church. I, I feel like that there's somebody listening to me right now where God is going to give you the courage to straighten out your financial affairs. Uh, that this will be the year where you will be marked stable financially. Somebody shout financial stability. That there are going to be additional streams of income. I told you that this will be the time and year where God is going to give you new lines of business. Where God is not only going to give you the idea, but he's going to send the purchaser of the idea. Praise God. He's going to send people who are wanting to contract and invest in the thing that you are gifted it in which is why it is critical that you solidify at least one thing you desire to do outside of your nine to five now psalm 92 13 says and we talked about this on last week that the righteous shall what flourish come on like what the palm tree now i spent a whole sermon teaching on that now we're gonna say that again as if you know what psalm 92 and 13 says let's try it again maybe y'all fell asleep on me or maybe you're peeking into somebody else's service but come on back to connect church plano come on back come on back to this live experience psalm 92 and 13 part a says what the righteous shall flourish like what the palm tree come on somebody shout i'm gonna be stable now, for those who are the skeptics, for those who like to play devils, y'all ain't going to say nothing to me. For those of you who always sees the glass half empty instead of half full, I'm, let me deal with you for just a few moments. So, Because I sense by the discernment of God that you're trying to shut this message down because you're basing everything about your life on current events. You're basing everything about the future on current events. Y'all ain't going to say nothing to me. You're basing everything about your life on what is going on. And so before you shut me down with your list of rebuttals based on what's going on on 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue or the latest COVID numbers, I'm here to lift the idea that here's the thing you should avoid judging the year by its cover. 
You've got to avoid this in this time. If you're going to be stable, if you believe that this will be the year where God does some great with you spiritually, emotionally, relationally, and financially, I'm here to release a prophetic decree, a prophetic edict that you cannot judge this year by its cover. What do you mean, Pastor Ken? I mean that while there's chaos in the White House, there will be stability in your house. While NASDAQ and the Dow is losing gains, your testimony will be, I've seen nothing but increase. Or better yet, what pandemic? Y'all ain't going to talk back to me. While others are experiencing layoff, you are going to be in a season where you will be marked with opportunity. That people are going to be inboxing you and DMing you. Y'all ain't going to talk back to me. Requests from recruiters asking that you send your resume. Y'all better hear this word today. So, so I'm trying to tell you that this will be the year where you're going to be able to see finally some consistent in your life. You have witnessed the, the wicked prosper. But this will be the time where the righteous will prosper in the face of the wicked. Glory to God. The Bible says the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous. I sort of believe like God is getting ready to transfer what has already belonged to you. Y'all come on talk back to me today I don't know who I'm talking to today I, I don't care what's going on in their house but your house will be stable somebody shout my house will be stable just prophesy that just decree it come on drop it in the chat my house will be stable my house will be stable come on prophesy open your mouth and prophesy my mouth come on out of your mouth prophesy it my house will be stable my business will be stable my family will be stable everything connected to me will be stable my middle name is stable kendrick stable bennett y'all they go talk back to me my middle name is stable oh when you look at me you see stability i'm trying to build your faith yeah, i don't mean to get too excited but i got a glimpse of your future i got a glimpse of what's next for you i got a glimpse of what's coming in the next several weeks i i got a glimpse of what god plans to do with the degree that's been on the shelf i've i've got a glimpse of what ministry is going to erupt out of your frustration I've got a glimpse of what God plans to do with your cancer. I've got a glimpse of what God plans to do with your COVID-19 positive test. I've, 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 I've got a glimpse of why the divorce had to happen. I, I got a glimpse of why the bankruptcy had to happen. I, I got a glimpse of it all. Other folks marriages are under attack your marriage will remain intact my point is simply this in order pastor D for something to be considered stable it has to have been able to stand the test of time in order for something to be designated stable it has to have been able to prove itself that it can it can stand the rain it can stand tsunami it can stand the hard times it could stand pandemic outbreaks it, it it has to be able to prove itself everybody talk a good game y'all ain't gonna say nothing we can talk a good game we act like we got it together 
prior to this whole pandemic outbreak we we appeared to have it together but the first week of being stuck in the house prescriptions for medication went up <laughs> marriages that 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 looked like they were will and jada smith y'all ain't gonna say nothing to me realize that they couldn't stand each other because they had to stay in the house with each other to deal with their realities in other words god was away with being one way on the outside and being something different on the inside for something to be designated stable it has to be able to stand let's see the the the, the, the test of time travis you got to stand the test of time can we just serve God when, when he takes away what you thought you loved? I mean, when, when he doesn't have any answers for your questions, will you still trust him? When what he does something that you don't agree with and he doesn't give you, give you answers, but he gives you comfort instead. Has anybody been comforted without an answer? What, what, that, 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 that means you're stable spiritually. He's been checking the levels of your spirituality when he takes something away from you that you thought you were in love with and really we discovered that you were in lust with. <laughs> you called lust love. You called lust grace what am I trying to tell you in this period we're in truth is Catania the, the heat is on That's it. the heat is on somebody shout the heat is on the heat is on. Somebody shout the heat is on. It's it's on. It's it's on. That's everything about these last 24 months or so. It's it's been God turning the heat on in your life. Psalm 115 and 5 puts it th this way. It says, The Lord tests and proves the unyieldingly righteous, but his soul abhors the wicked. That is the amplified version the Bible I love what the writer says he said the Lord tests and proves the unyieldingly righteous but his soul abhors the wicked uh, this pandemic Yasmin has been what I would call the great revealer you and I are getting a chance to see how we handle the heat in the kitchen like it or not, it is God who tests our hearts. He purifies our motives and he brings us forth as precious, kind-hearted people that he has called us to be. He tests us with a singular goal in mind. It's to bring us forward. Better and more precious for his service and purposes in this morning's proverb we have before us, which of course we know is written by Solomon. This particular proverb deals with the contrast, contrast between wisdom and folly. When you look at Proverbs 14, he opens up in a very, very interesting way, Jerome. He he opens up dealing with the difference between how a wise and foolish woman builds her house. Then as you continue forward, Elder Elect Ronalds, you find that he moves the conversation along by dealing with what I would say a, a, a taboo subject. He deals with a very taboo subject that, that, that most in reality don't ever talk about. What I'm referring to, it is, he deals with the truth about how we missed it the last time. We don't like to talk about how we missed it. We post our accomplishments. We post what's next, but we never talk about how we missed it. We don't sit down and have 
a 30 minute Facebook live experience and just tell the truth and say, you know what I thought was God wasn't God. Y'all ain't going to say nothing to me. You, you don't find that divorcees line up and they form a group. And let's talk about how we miscarried the first relationship. So he deals with the truth of how we miss it. We like to complicate the most simplest things, but he, 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 he makes it very plain to us on how we missed it. And the reality is, I know you don't want to be told this, but, but you've missed it. Some of y'all are dating something you missed. <laughs> you're dating something you missed. You, 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 you're dating dumb to accommodate your loneliness, but you missed it. That's why you're tolerating what you're tolerating. When, when you get a glimpse of the Father's love, you won't let anything or anybody else uh, downgrade what you know real love looks like and appears to be. Ah. So Proverbs, Solomon helps us understand and deal with what we don't like to talk about. Is how we missed it. Just, just... If I'm talking to anybody that's ever missed it, can we just encourage somebody right now who's in the middle of a I missed it moment? Just can you just encourage your your virtual neighbor and just drop in the chat right now? Yeah, I missed it. Just 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 put it right. Just the way I said it, not proper grammar. Pastor D, just put it the way I said it. Yeah, I missed it. I know it's not proper to put it that way, but just say, yeah, I missed it. 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 What I thought was an opportunity was a distraction. I missed it. I missed it. I missed it. I thought what I was in love with, I di discovered that it was lust over love because I realized I couldn't stand him, but he was just good in the bedroom. I missed it. I went for triceps and biceps instead of integrity. I missed it. Y'all ain't going to talk back to me. I went for the Coke bottle in uh, Chateau Masaya. I missed it. I missed it. And all of us in this room and in this cyber sanctuary, if we would be honest with ourselves, we have missed major opportunities, major doors, major breakthroughs, major miracles, major blessings, and major connections because we had our way of doing certain things. If I can be honest, I remember in my first relational miscarriage of a marriage, I realized on the wedding day she wasn't the one. But because monies had been spent for the guests to have a nice party, I went through the ceremony anyway when everything in me like the Holy Spirit was telling me this is not the one. But to save face and to appear, y'all ain't going to talk back to me, stable when truth was I was unstable because three years later I filed for divorce. So what all you did was delay what you could have dealt with in the beginning. Oh, I'm trying to help somebody today. I'm, 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 I know in your mind you have a way. I know in your mind you, you, you got a degree. I know. I know when we look your name up, it's, it's cover, it covers every degree out there. I, I know your brother so-and-so or sister so-and-so with this degree and that degree. But scripture, uh, Shatokot, I might say, says, says, says the steps of a good man is not ordered by your degrees. But it's ordered by the Lord. I've come to realize in my 40s that every time Jerome in life, I make a move without the counsel of or the dependence of trust in the Holy Spirit. It will cause major delays and unnecessary seasons of difficulty. Truth is, some of us are stuck in the rut and stuck in the mess that we're in is because we avoided godly counsel. 
to avoid it, godly counsel. I talked to those who I consider daughters like your wife, Andrea. I, I had never met you before. She joined the church. I, I can tell she really wanted to move forward. I said, bring him to me. I said, I know y'all come up with a date and y'all ready to get mad, but bring him to me. Let me check him out with my own set of eyes because I can sift through post. Y'all ain't going to talk back to me. It's quiet in this cyber sanctuary and the physical sanctuary. Truth is, we don't bring him or her to leadership until we're frustrated. But until we've had babies together, y'all ain't going to talk. Until we've got in debt together. Until we've bought houses together. Y'all, oh, I'm trying to help you understand we've got in the mess that we're in. Because we are avoided godly counsel. I remember about three years ago, know the church, we were talking about the gifts of the spirit and we, if y'all remember, we had our night of Pentecost, I believe somewhere of the eve of 2019 or 2018 going into 2019 and we talked about how we were believing God to move us into activating the gifts and we talked about un unwrapped gifts. And I go off somewhere, I'm at a good friend's conference, and a person uh, well-known travels the world internationally, and you would think just by his followers that that in itself would breed a, a, a confirmation of his status when I realize you can have great followers and low integrity. So this person, I'm not going to name him out, calls me out and says, you, sir, out of all of the thousands of people in the room, he says, you, sir, he came to me and he began to speak to me about what God was doing in my life and how I was called into the apostolic work in the church. And my wife will prove this. I recorded the message. Then I ran it up to my bishop and said, can you prove this word that was godly counsel because the truth is we are in messes spiritually because we've been on somebody else's live stream we've been in somebody else's church service y'all y'all ain't gonna talk back to me we've sown seeds in other ministries that we have yet to drop in our own ministry and no wonder we are in spiritual chaos it is because you want your flesh to be appeased for positions that you desire that your character has not called you to be able to handle so you will foreclose on gift you will foreclose on your giftings because you don't want to have a truth about how your life is set up truth is you are gifted and you are called called but the way your life is set up you know your little secret girlfriend that lives with you that you ain't told nobody about but you called to be a prophet and a preacher y'all ain't gonna say nothing to me you you know little secret things that you deal with under the cover like addiction to pornography Oh, y'all don't want to talk to me today? Y'all don't want me to get... Oh, you want me to just fake the funk and tell you what's next? And the reality is, is when a prophetic word goes forth, it's given to us in part. It's talking to you about your potential and not your struggles. It's designed to encourage you to move beyond your addictions and take a risk and go after what God has on your life. But if you refuse to change... If you refuse to change, if you refuse to change, all it will be is a great Sunday morning experience that you tore up speakers and TVs and jumped over pews for and you're going to be 65 wondering why it didn't happen. It's because you've not dealt with your private issues. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to go. <laughs> in this direction I'm just talking about the criticality if we're gonna be stable we must come to understand that stable is often supported by sound and godly wisdom godly wisdom I remember when we wrote the contract on this building I was as nervous as a fish catfish getting ready to be dropped in hot grease as you can tell I'm hungry I want some catfish I was nervous but I called my bishop, 
I not only called him, I called a great friend who knew numbers and business. I had, I sat on the other side of this building in the parking lot for four hours because based on my reality, I couldn't afford this. And I've never done anything based on reality. It's always been faith. But I understand there has to be a balance between reality and faith. Because rea faith will embarrass you. So, so I sat. Pastor D, if you remember, I was in the parking lot for four hours. Trying to talk myself out of doing it. But some in me was telling me it's about to happen. Some in me was telling me, go forward. Some in me was telling me, not by might, nor by power, but by God's spirit, said the Lord. Some in me, I had to be encouraged. My friend prayed with me. He says, PK, I think this is it. I think it's time. I think this is the one. And we've... Been here four going on five years, praise God, without skipping a beat. God has kept it all together. We have transformed this facility into a state-of-the-art room for television broadcasts. I'm here to tell you, godly counsel will help you differentiate the difference between uh, what's right, what's wrong. Some of you all are working jobs you thought was God. Be quiet. You, you good? We are working jobs we thought was God. On day one, we don't want to be there. Day one. You came down to the altar. I slapped you with oil. Y'all ain't going to talk back to me. We decreed and declared it. We, we praise God with you because you got the offer, offer letter. But now, you, you've been there one week. I'm sick of it. That's, that's what we say. That's why we got to deal with your schizophrenic nature. Because you don't know what you want. Which is why the Bible says, I will give you the desires of your heart when you pray. Because when you pray, I'm going to help you know what's me and what's flesh. We think, oh, well, I just bring it before the Lord and he'll give it to me. No, that ain't Bible. Because God is not going to put something within you that he has not authorized for your life. Truth is, we're in jams and struggles and trials and difficulties. Some of us got the virus because we didn't, we, we didn't take it serious. Y'all ain't going to say nothing to me. I know, I know you don't want to come down that lane. I ain't wearing no mask. I'm tired of being in the house. You got your hind parts all across the way. You post it, hey, look at me in, 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 in Mexico. And now you done come down with COVID and you blowing my phone up. Tell me I pray me through. Where if you kept your hind parts when they released an edict of set your tail down. Okay, let me just, let me just move on. Half the struggle and the problem with our stability is we don't like to listen. We don't want to be taught. I, I know you're grown. I got it. I know you're grown. I, I, I know you're grown. You don't even have to show me your ID, your driver's license, or your birth certificate. I know you're grown. But every, don't tell me who you're leading until you tell me who you're under. If you are a leader with followers that you're not submitted, you truthfully are taking a, a lone walk by yourself. Because the moment your fans can no longer be impressed, as we've let, you know, social media followers and subscribers on our, you know, you, everybody got their own YouTube channel. Now. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. We get to your YouTube channel. You ain't saying nothing. You ain't saying nothing. You don't even have the right setup for that kind of exposure. Y'all ain't going to talk about it. Uh, your life ain't even set up right. You schizophrenic. You post one thing about some man, then you contradict the statement that you ain't saying nothing. That's the problem with social media. It has given people a platform. Let me, let, me, let me move on. Let me move on. 
Let me move on. We are in the jam. Pastor, you pray. Please pray because I feel I'm drifting because uh, I, I really want to say what I want to say. But let me just let me just let me just stick with the text. Let me just stick with the text. We're in jams. We're in trials. We're in struggles because we've we've avoided recognizing this is a big one. The criticality of timing. The criticality of timing. The criticality of timing. I sense by the spirit of God, even during this time of fasting and praying, God told half of y'all to move and you've yet to move. You have no idea that God has moved the distractions out of the way so that he can authenticate the assignment. And so half of you all are letting your fear restrict you and then you're going to get to the end of the fast. I told you it don't work. No, 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 no. The fast work. The issue was uh, you lazy. You don't have to work for nothing. You don't want to work past nine. You're lazy. You'd rather watch Netflix series uh, instead of creating your own series uh, that people can invest in. And then you want to blame it on the discipline of fasting and praying. God is telling some of you to move now. Uh, they closed it. I was running too much money through it. I'm sorry. I got use Apple Pay now. I'm telling you, y'all are missing it. The glory comes to bring earthly ease. Write that down. Write that down. The glory comes to bring earthly ease. Anytime the people of God experience glory in the Old Testament, a breakthrough followed. They didn't just shout because the glory was there. When the glory showed up with Moses, he parted the Red Sea. The glory fell with, with, with uh, 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 Joshua, who was in a jam. The Bible says the sun stood, uh, uh, stood still and the moon stopped. Joshua 10, and he had enough time to pull through. Do you realize that right now the reason why you're pushing aside the plate is God is giving you timing right now. I prophesy it's the time. It's the time. It's the time. It's the time. Whatever it is, it's now. It's now. It's now. It's now. He's moving the distractions. He's moving the hindrance. Whatever it is, if it's a vision, if it's a business, file for the license. Go look at the building. Whatever it is, go for it. Go for it. God is waiting on you to go now. Leave now. Leave now. Leave your country and your kindred and your father's house. Genesis 12. And now, I got something to show you. Everything about this time of fasting and praying to Tanya God has something to show you he's got something to show you just put that in the chat he got something to show me he's got something to show me this week it's going to be clear like 2020 vision you're going to be able to Recognize a friend from an adversary. You're going to be able to tell the difference. You're going to be able to tell just in the text and the phone call. Attitude, the energy of the, the call will be different. You're going, to, you're going to recognize. You're going to recognize because truth is half your problems is your connections. The people you're hanging around. You, you're hanging around people with low level thinking and no wonder you can't get to where God wants you to be. But if you desire to be an entrepreneur, you need to get in groups of entrepreneurs. You need to get no numbers of folk who run and stuff. You, you need to achieve for folk who has a life that you desire to live. If not better, you, you're hanging around. God's got something to show you. He's going to give you names. He's going to give you faces and dreams. He's going to give you names. He's going to give you faces and dreams. He's going to give you names, faces, and dreams. He's going to give you names. Faces and dreams. He's going to show it to you before you ever embrace it in reality you're gonna see it before you get it 
you're going to see it before you get it. I, I know what you're driving now is what it is, but, but, but you're driving something. Man, what a tremendous word that God gave us on today. I hate to have to cut it short right there, but we had to find the spot and that was it. But you want to make sure that you stay connected to us. Here's what I want you to do. A couple of things is if you enjoyed this message, first thing I want you to do is just drop in the comment like right now, this was my word. I'm coming back. I'm going to be looking through these comments. I'm not only going to be looking, but I'm also going to be praying because I believe that that some of you that are watching me right now, the majority of you watching me right now, this is going to be the finest hour of your life, the greatest hour of exposure. And as you put that in the comment, this was my word. I'm going to be calling your name out in prayer. Our church right now is in a time of fasting and praying at this precise moment. So we're going to be calling your names out during this time of fasting and praying. And then I want you to take it a step further. I want you to follow me. If you're interested in following our ministry, once again, my name is Apostle Bennett. I lead and pastor a phenomenal ministry here out of the Dallas Fort Worth area. And here's what you got to do. If you jump over to our Connect Church Plano page and make sure that you like and follow there and then turn on those alerts so that you can be notified of any ministry opportunities that are taking place here at our ministry. We lead every single day with prayer at 7 a.m. And I would love for you to meet me in the prayer room. So do me that solid. Do me a favor. Make sure you don't forget after commenting, this was my word because I'm coming back. I'm going to be searching those comments and I'm going to be praying specifically for you and whatever your needs are. As a matter of fact, if you have a need that you have before the Lord, go ahead and drop that in the chat or you can just inbox us. But make sure you go over to the Connect Church Plano page, like and subscribe. Now, listen to me. If you're interested in following me personally, uh, you can simply do that by simply following I am Pastor Ken on every social media outlet out there. That's Facebook. That's the, the newly appointed clubhouse. That's Twitter. That's also Instagram. I would love to connect with you during this time. But thank you so much for, for allowing us to experience and coming to your home on today. And I pray that you were blessed by the measure of the word of God. Listen, if you are interested in sowing, we make it very easy for you to do that. Uh, listen, at the bottom of your screen, there are some instructions there where you can make that happen. Simply all you have to do is text the keyword giving to 972-544-4200. Once again, text the keyword giving to 972-544-4200 and then follow the preceding instructions given and you will be able to give and support what God is doing with us here at Connect Church. I want you to know I'm praying for you. I love you. It's so amazing to meet and get a chance to experience you getting a chance to experience us. I'm coming back. Make sure you drop in the chat. This was my word. Love you guys. Remember this. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Be blessed. It's like a treasure hidden in a field. That's Matthew chapter 13, verse number 44. I am Pastor Ken, and I'm excited to share some news with you that I have just, I mean, I've been on tiptoe anticipation about what I felt God was going to use to bless his people. One of the questions Jesus was often asked was, when would the kingdom of heaven manifest itself? Those individuals who are harassing Jesus, antagonizing Jesus, and, and all this kind of stuff. So they went through these series of questions and answers, and Jesus finally answered and said these powerful words, the kingdom of heaven is among you. Now, of course, they missed the whole point of what Jesus was trying to say. In other words, when you are looking for the kingdom, look no further than me. Now understand that before Jesus ever left the earth, one of the things that he said to his disciples was these words, greater work shall ye do also. And I believe that it's time for you and I to embrace an idea of experiencing the kingdom of God in our everyday life. So when people go to look for what the kingdom of heaven looks like, they should look no further than you and I. So today I'm excited to announce my very first book entitled, The unheard of. Yes, we are in some uncertain 
and questionable times that I really believe that God wants to take these uncertain times and use them for your advantage. In this book, I share some of my trade secrets on how I've overcome some of the toughest areas of my life. I'm a guy that's been through a bankruptcy. I'm a guy that's went through business failure after business failure before ever experiencing some success. It was someone who said that really success is success, failure after failure. And so I want to use this book and I want to encourage you to get your copy because this book is going to be the game changer for you that's going to put you on the map towards the trajectory of what it is you have been hoping for, praying for, and what you've been believing for. People have been asking me, Pastor Ken, can you just kind of sum up what this book is all about? Here it is. It is the best of both worlds. In it, you're going to find scripture after scripture on what God says as it relates to our ability to produce wealth in our lives. But not only that, there is a business undertone to this book. And if you know me, you know I love business. I am the guy that loves entrepreneurship. I am always pro for someone starting their own business. And so I want you to know that this is the time for you to get your copy. It's out uh, right now. All you have to do is click the button at the bottom of this screen, matter of fact, and order a copy or two. Why not see it into someone else? And I'm going to sign this copy specifically for you because I want you to prepare towards the journey called The Unheard Of. Get your copy today.